you would be challenged and see a need that God really wants to take you to a place that you've never been before. However, the truth is, is that many people just don't want to go. And that's the reality for every pastor, every leader. Wherever there's change and transition, you can only take people where they want to go. If they don't want to go, you just can't take them. Because the truth of the matter is many people are afraid of heights. They're afraid of going higher because they've never been there before. They've never seen the place where God wants to take them. God forbid that you were offered a million dollar contract and you had to fly to California to get it. And you got to get in the airplane and go 30,000 feet to receive what God has promised. The unfortunate thing is that many would still try to get in the car when only an airplane can get you there to get your reward. And that's the thing about God is that there's only one way that he can get you where he wants to take you. And he can only get you when you go higher and meet him at the next level. Many people love being average. We live in a world of mediocrity. We live in a world of the status quo. The truth of the matter is we don't want to be challenged a lot of times because when you challenge someone, you're expecting something from them. Expecting them to be better. You're expecting them to step up and rise to the occasion. But I believe I got some people here that can say in this season of my life, I may not know everything. I may not know all the details. I may not know what's going to happen tomorrow. But Lord, I want to go to the next power. I don't know what it's going to cost me. I don't know how many people I'm going to have to lose. I don't know who I'm going to have to walk away from. But I cannot stay on this level because there's nothing here but death and decay. I got to go to the next level tell somebody lord take me to the next power i don't know anybody here under the sound of my voice that you, you know let me back up you only have faith for what you know but it says you you can't have faith for what's not revealed to you you can believe it but until it's revealed, it's not a faith. Do that make sense to you? And so, I don't know anybody here under the sound of my voice who has believed God and is still believing God for something to manifest in any particular realm that hasn't happened yet. How many of you here have had this experience where you believed for things and it didn't happen? Has religion made you that dishonest? That's everybody here under the sound of my voice. You have what you have revelation of. And when you quit growing, you, wow, Ina Mashai. When you quit growing, or you believe you've reached, the pace of your faith slows down. Because for you to say if you've reached, that's arrogance. It is a continual revelation that keeps your faith active, that keeps it progressive. So you know what you have to think? So the mindset of every believer is what you don't have today, don't worry, it can happen tomorrow. And if it doesn't happen then, the more light you get, it's going to come. Does that make sense? So don't become discouraged. Am I going to be able to stand this? He's going to enable you. He will enable us, and sometimes it's a day at a time. And somebody may say, well, how do you stand this one day at a time? How do we live one day at a time? The just should live by faith, how one day at a time? And sometimes we get lots of hopes and we can see the future gets brighter. And yet oftentimes in those dark times, it's one day at a time. We learn more in the darkness, but we're always moving toward the light. You see, that's why you and I don't ever have to give up. 
If God has said, here's what I'm going to do, you can rest your eternal life on the fact that God, in all of His sovereign power, everything in heaven is behind the promise of God. He will make it a living reality no matter what. You cannot stop God. When God says, here's what I'm going to do. Now, a conditional promise is, here's what I'll do if you do thus and so. But when God says, here's what I'm going to do, there's no question about it. That is an unconditional promise of God that cannot be conditioned or altered by anything. And I could give you a number of very personal experiences when God says, here's what I'm going to do. It was totally irrational to me, didn't fit anything. It was a struggle for me, a big battle for me to believe what I'd heard. But I'll never forget getting in the prayer room one day when I was really struggling about something. And it's like the Lord said to me now, are you going to believe what you see, what you feel, what you hear, or what I said? And when I finally could come to the conclusion to say, God, I'm going to believe what you said, I can remember all hell broke loose. Everything around me said, you can't believe it. What I heard, what I saw, what I felt. It's like the Lord would say to me, you going to believe what I said? Are you going to believe what you feel, what you see, what you hear? That's why we must learn to listen to God and not question the word of the Father. He will do what He promised to do. And you know what? That means that no matter what's going on, how much darkness we walk through, there's always light. Always light out there somewhere. God will bring us through all of it. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 6, verse 5. We're going to get to the text in a moment. But Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Listen to the mind of God. In other words, God said, every time I looked at man, the only thing that was going through him was evil continually. May I say this, the reason why many times we can't go to the next level is because our mind stops us. It is true that your mentality determines how high you're going to go. You can pray for somebody, you can beg with them, you can plead with them, but if they don't change their mentality, they can't go anywhere. They can't move. They can't be all that God wants them to be. But Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, this is what we want. This has got to be our desire but Noah found grace there's that word again grace we talked about it last week grace is what consistent power and strength for weakness in the midst of a decaying place culture the only one that God could find was Noah the Bible said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now it's important to know that that word Noah or his name means rest. And for many of you, when you decide to go to the next level, you're going to find something that you never thought imaginable and that is rest. Y'all ain't hearing this today. Rest in who you are. Rest in your identity. Rest in what God has called you to be. Rest in where he's taking you. Tell somebody it's time for some sweatless victories. You know what that means, don't you? If you got to work and wrestle for everything. If everything is a struggle for you. If everything is such a press for you then you have to ask yourself, have I entered into that rest? Have I entered into that place in God that he desires for my life? Understand here as we look at the text, Mark chapter 9, verse number 2. The Bible says that six days later, Jesus took with him Peter James and John 
understand this that Jesus is not taking everyone with him Jesus is not elevating everyone with him even though you're saved you are Christian you are a believer Jesus is not taking everyone with him because one thing we don't preach in church is that there is a qualifying thing a prerequisite to follow him and to go higher and a lot of times we think God is just going to take us as we are